Hello and welcome to another Acme Minute. Did you know that no matter how good you are at CPR, you can only generate about 25% of normal blood flow to vital organs? Think about that for a second. No matter how well you perform it, you are only about a quarter as efficient as a normal beating heart. When we compress the chest, we create a positive pressure that forces blood out of the heart and air out of the lungs. As the chest wall recoils, the opposite occurs. We create a negative pressure. This vacuum pulls air back into the lungs, some blood back into the heart, and slightly lowers intracranial pressure. So we rely on positive pressure created by chest compressions to circulate blood forward and chest wall recoil to create the vacuum that refills the heart and lowers intracranial pressure. But remember that CPR provides suboptimal blood flow. This is due to inherent inefficiencies. The good news is that we have simple technology that addresses two of the fundamental inefficiencies of conventional CPR. Studies have shown that this tool can help us double blood flow back to the heart and increase blood flow to the brain by 50%. The RescuePod ITD is an impedance threshold device that does just that. In addition, studies have shown that using the RescuePod in conjunction with high quality CPR can improve survival by 25% or more compared to conventional CPR. Recall that when it comes to creating a vacuum in the chest, conventional CPR can be inefficient. An open airway allows air to be drawn in during chest wall recoil. This wipes out the vacuum we're relying on to fill the heart. Notice how the heart stops filling as soon as that air comes in. The less blood that fills the heart, the less blood that can circulate. The RescuePod ITD corrects this problem. It's attached to a face mask or other airway device and regulates the flow of air into the chest during CPR. When we push down on the chest, air can freely leave the patient. But as the chest wall recoils, the ITD closes and prevents air from being drawn back in. This creates a greater vacuum in the chest, pulling twice as much blood back to the heart and circulating that blood forward on the next compression. Studies have shown that the vacuum produced by the rescue pot also lowers intracranial pressure, making it easier to circulate blood to the brain. No other device lowers intracranial pressure to improve blood flow to the brain, which is key to a full patient recovery. Applying the rescue pot as soon as possible after compressions begin allows the patient to get enhanced circulation early in the resuscitation effort. To use the rescue pot, first connect it to the face mask. Connect the ventilation bag to the top of the rescue pod. Next, open the airway to establish and maintain a tight face mask seal on the patient's face. Use a two-handed technique to assure that no air can be drawn in from around the face mask. Then, begin performing CPR at the recommended compression to ventilation ratio. It's best if the airway person's only job is maintaining a face mask seal. The rescue pod can also be used on an advanced airway such as an endotracheal tube or supraglottic airway. Once tube placement is confirmed, secure the airway with a commercial tube holder. Then, move the rescue pod to the airway. Connect the end tidal CO2 detector and the ventilation bag to the top of the rescue pod. Next, turn on the timing lights. They flash 10 times a minute and can be used to guide both chest compressions and ventilations. Provide one ventilation and at least 10 compressions with each light flash. When you get a pulse back and chest compressions are no longer indicated, remove the rescue pod from the circuit and continue providing supportive care. We all know that ventilating and compressing at the proper rates are essential components of high quality CPR. Going too slow or too fast impacts survival, but conventional CPR doesn't offer any guidance to rescuers on the proper rates. Use the lights on the rescue pod to get the chest compression and ventilation rates right. Data from the Rock Prime study showed that when an ITD was used with chest compressions at rates around 100 per minute, observed survival was increased by about 25% or more. Essentially, the Rescue Pod ITD helps correct the inherent inefficiencies of CPR by increasing perfusion and promoting high quality CPR performance. Again, data shows that high quality CPR and the use of an ITD results in a 25% or more improvement in survival. Why is this important? Because it could mean 15,000 more lives saved in the U.S. each year. 
We recommend you check your local protocols to ensure there are no conflicts with the widely accepted information provided during this ACME Minute. Visit AmericanCME.com where you can earn free credits towards your EMS license. As always, every course at American CME is completely free. For more information on the Rescue Pod ITD, visit AdvancedCirculatory.com or KnowTheRate.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day. This video and additional training resources are available at combatmedicalsystems.com.